Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Ben Kapoor here, I hope you are all doing well. So last week on my Instagram account, I reached out on my stories and thought it'd be a good idea for me to edit some of your shots. And uh, I uh, opened up a new email address and it's benkaporedit at gmail.com. Was inundated with raw files and uh, I've been picking a few to edit and I've pieced together, I think about six or seven images here that I've been editing over the last couple of days. I'm gonna edit your raw files and just put my take on it. Just wanna say as well, I definitely am not gonna be making those images better, but it's just my take on them. And some of you guys, your edits are absolutely unbelievable, but this is just my take on your images. Let's get stuck straight in. Uh, with a mate of mine. I will put their hashtags and Instagrams up here on the side so you can go check them out. This is Gareth. Um, this is Gareth's Photography and uh, he's based over in Wales and I've recently started to connect with him and he's got some lovely, lovely stuff on his Instagram as you guys can see here. And uh, he sent me over an image from the crash DC plane over in Iceland. I basically start off my edits like this. Just taking focus, make sure everything is nice and sharp and then I go straight to the crop tool and uh, try and sort the crop out as best as I can. So I fiddled around with the crop a little bit uh, and now just moving around to basic adjustments. So I'd like to start off the highlights and the shadows, always dropping down the highlights a little bit just to retrieve a bit more data in the sky and just punching the shadows up a little bit and uh, revealing detail in the darker bits. And uh, the sky in this photo I can see has a lot of potential. So. Um, just pulling down a grad here on the sky and actually using the luminosity mass down the bottom in the grad tool to select the lighter bit of the sky, I can affect the sky without actually affecting the plane. So you can see the amount of detail there that's just being pulled out of the plane already. Just messing about with the sky, really trying to get those punchy clouds to come through. So after I've done the grad tool there, just basic white and black adjustments, just the normal sort of thing basically, touch of clarity and uh, just a touch of contrast and make sure the whites and blacks actually sit right with the image and just make it look pleasing to the eye really. But my main priority with this image is the sky because he's got some really, really beautiful textures up there in the sky. There's a big sensor spot there, so we're just gonna get rid of that one there as well. And that's pretty much it in the basic adjustments here, just pulling back the vibrance a little bit and uh, not make it look oversaturated. Uh, just dropping the blues down a little bit as well to bring out the depth in the clouds because the blues can be a bit funny in the clouds, especially when you start to punch the contrast, uh, you can get unwanted color come through. Just, just pull them back in the uh, HSL tab. Um, now I'm gonna open it up into Photoshop and uh, Adobe Photoshop always takes absolutely ages to uh, open up. And in Photoshop, we're basically going to be getting rid of these people. Starting off with the lasso tool, just go over to the people, draw around them. You don't have to be too picky. Just draw a nice big circle around them. And then when you're ready to get rid of them, press shift and delete and content aware it will magically make them disappear. And sometimes Photoshop can not quite get it right. So it's just a matter of just moving things around and actually using um, the clone tool, just making sure that it's as seamless and, and as good as you can get it basically. So the great thing about Photoshop and having a Wacom tablet is you can paint and dodge and burn bits a lot easier when you, than you can with a mouse and in Lightroom. So all I'm doing here is just lifting up the whites on the plane there and then darkening the clouds down a little bit in places and lifting through the whites and just really making them look a lot deeper um, than they were to start off with. And when you see the raw file in a minute, you could see how much just painting in little bits like this can really, really bring out the depth in the sky that's actually already there um, but just allowing you to just bring it through more and more. So when you're done in Photoshop, just go up to File, press Save, and then automatically that that you've just edited will come straight back into Lightroom with all those adjustments, and then you can make your final tweaks and then export the frame. I usually like to finish off my image by just lifting up the white slightly and adding a slight vignette just to finish off the frame. And uh, there you go, there's my edit. Good job, Gareth, it's an awesome shot. I absolutely love that location and you absolutely smashed that shot, dude, so well done. Okay, so moving on, this is Lloyd Evans and he sent me over one of his shots from Canada and God, I'd love to get out to Canada. So as you can see by Lloyd's Instagram, he's got some lovely, lovely tones, really warm, rich tones and he's got a gorgeous editing style. I don't think I'll be able to do anything like you do, dude, but I will do my best. Bringing it into Lightroom to start off with, for me, straight away, I can see that the composition kind of, because of where it is and where you shot it and the lines and stuff, it doesn't quite line up in my head. So straight away, I was really, really struggling with the, uh, the crop of everything to make sure that everything lined up just so. And in the end, I actually ended up going down towards the Transform tab. In the Transform tab, 
drawing lines to try and get the actual main horizon where the lake finishes to be dead straight in line with the actual rock. So try and make it look just a lot more straight. I think it's just the way that it was shot down at the floor. It just made it look slightly warped on the edges and that's just a, a wide angle lens. I think it was shot quite wide, but it's an absolutely gorgeous image. Um, just needed a little bit of playing around to start off with to get it nice and straight. And as you can see here, I'm messing about with all sorts of different crops, square crops, three by two crops, four by fives, just to try and get it to look right in my head. Uh, eventually I settled on a four by five crop um, cropping in quite heavily actually on the image and losing a lot of it and it just kind of sat really nice with me and then it just started to just do basic adjustments uh, whites and blacks and shadows and just really pulling out as much detail as I can in all the highlights and lifting the shadows again like I did in the last shot using the luminosity uh, feature in the grad tool um, I can pull down a grad here on the sky and actually get rid of the darker bits because we don't want it to affect the darker bits of the mountains we just want it to affect the bright bits of the sky uh, and then I can pull down the detail on the sky without affecting um, the actual mountains. And you've got to be a bit careful because sometimes it can look a little funny, especially if you've got very, very harsh edges between the dark bits and the whiter bits. But as long as you're really subtle, you can bring out more detail on the sky there. Um, yeah, just a touch of clarity and then just working our way down towards the HSL tab and then opened it straight up into Photoshop because you've got a lot more freedom in Photoshop, as I said in the last one, to dodge and burn and lift through whites and blacks and just make it really look punchy. So by the time it's open Photoshop, using the brush tool, uh, heading over to my brightness and contrast and literally just punching it up to the extreme basically and then just invert the mask by pressing Ctrl and I. Uh, make sure you've pressed B and selected your brush tool and actually go in then and then paint away and bring through highlights and push back darker bits that you don't like just so that it looks good to your eye and that's basically what I did uh, with all these rocks in the foreground and really really try to make them punch and come through and then eventually after doing all of that the colour in the water in Lake Louise and Lake Moraine over there for some reason is just absolutely beautiful. The color is amazing. So using the eyedropper tool, I actually um, got the exact color and then on the brush tool, just punched it up a little bit so it's a little bit more saturated and then just started to bring back some of that blue that was there that I lost from um, pulling back the saturation and vibrance earlier. Uh, and then yeah, just gently brushing over the water there just to bring back some of the blue color. And then when you're done in Photoshop, like I said, press save and it'll head back over to Lightroom, make your final adjustments. I usually put a small vignette on the edge, just bump up the white slightly and job done. Well done Lloyd, it's an absolute banging shot. I must get over to Canada someday because you've made that place look absolutely awesome. If you haven't checked him out already, go check him out right now. Well done Lloyd. Okay, so moving on to the next shot. This is Darren Blight. A couple of years ago, me and Darren, Rich and Jim actually went up to the Lake District. And if you haven't watched that video, we had an insane morning at the top of Cat Bell. So I'll just drop that link just here. Some lovely shots, lives down in Plymouth, quite local to me. And this is, sorry Darren, I can't remember what it is already. This is Tinside Lido in Plymouth Ho. And uh, Darren likes to focus a lot of his interest into the lifeboats. And this is a lovely shot down there in Plymouth Ho. And I really, really like the side light that's coming in from the side of this shot. So first of all, open it up into Lightroom as always. Uh, basic adjustments, whites and blacks, and try and sort out the crop and try and make it look a little bit more pleasing. And again, a similar to Lloyd's shot, got lines in this photo that kind of are just slightly, slightly off. And when you line it up on the crop tool in Lightroom, you can just see these lines uh, just not quite work. Like for example, we've got a line here down the bottom where there's like a string there in the pool and then you've got the horizon. So they're your main two lines. And I use the transform tool again in Darren's shot to actually just warp the image basically and straighten it up and um, after doing that as you can see here after doing that it really starts to make the image look a lot straighter so basic whites and blacks um, highlights down shadows up a smidge so I like to do very very little in Lightroom and then paint whites and blacks and contrast in on Photoshop I just feel that you get more of a freedom when you're using a tablet and a pen than you do with a mouse and a slider on Lightroom. So I can already see bits of the image that I want to get rid of, bits of boats, and I like my edits to look nice and clean and smooth. That's just my style. So after pulling a grad down on the sky, uh, I open it up into Photoshop. And um, like I said, I do want to get rid of some of these boats and distractions in the sea there. Select J on your keyboard, and this will bring up a brush that allows you to just paint and make things automatically disappear. And uh, it's really, really handy. So I just went around the whole scene, 
with my Wacom tablet and the brush tool just getting rid of every little bit that I didn't like and making it look nice and smooth. Sorry Darren, getting rid of all of the boats and uh, all the little distractions that to my eye look a little bit distracting. Cleaned up the sea basically and I actually went to the absolute extreme and in the pool here you could see all the drains and uh, after getting rid of all the boats in the sea I actually wanted to get rid of all the drains in the pool as well. So. I went through and got rid of all of the drains in the pool, so I don't know how the pool is going to drain, but it looks nice and clean now, and it looks nice and pleasing to my eye. And sometimes these drains are actually overlapping onto the darker bit, so I had to go around with the lasso tool and then shift delete and let actually Photoshop do the content aware and get rid of these drains. And then when you're done in Photoshop, hit save, bring it back into Lightroom. Basic adjustments again, just lifting the whites out of vignette, and then job done. Darren, it's an awesome shot. I love the color of the light, and I also love that warm sun setting in the background. So go check him out, guys. Good job, Darren, a good shot. So moving on to the next shot. This is Pierce Rosam, and he is sending me a file from Northern Ireland. He says, hi, Ben, I hope your family are staying safe. Mental times, hey? It's a little bit scary, dude, isn't it? Uh, I shot this pic a few weeks ago at sunset at the Flagstaff viewing point up in Northern Ireland. So thank you for sending across this shot, dude. I would be honored if you edit it and I really enjoy your Instagram and YouTube channel. Thank you, Pierce. Cheers, dude. It will be my pleasure to edit the shot for you. So Pierce actually sent me over a JPEG. He realized straight away and he said, oh, let me just send you the raw. But by that time, I'd already edited the JPEG. And uh, it just goes to show you can still work a JPEG image. You don't have quite the amount of freedom as you do as a raw file because you get the full file when you're shooting in raw. You get your camera's full dynamic range. But this was a JPEG and I took to the challenge and I still edited the shot. So let's dive straight into Lightroom. It's a great shot, dude. You've executed the shot really well. You've got some lovely light here and it looks like a really nice viewing point. Straight away, I can see the crop for me is slightly distracting. All these little bits down the bottom here are slightly distracting, but you've got a really, really nice tree line here um, that would work really nice as the bottom of the frame. And just the tops of the trees there can work really well. It's just framing off the bottom of the frame. After fiddling around with the crop for a little bit, basic adjustments as always, whites and blacks, highlights down a little bit, shadows up, and just don't quite have the freedom as you do with a raw file, but I still managed to make it work. A few sensor spots, I just went in and got rid of all those sensor spots and small little distractions in the sky. And after that's done, just whites and blacks. So highlights down, and I actually pulled the shadows down as well because I started to get a little bit of noise come through when I pushed the shadows, and that's just because it's a JPEG file. Uh, pulling a grad down on the sky there, and that's just allowing me to darken up the sky, bump the clarity a little bit, and just make those clouds pop and uh, really, really come through as much as I could. So it looks like a lovely evening and I uh, really wanted to bring through those blue tones. So just dropped the blues down a little bit and just pulled the vibrance back a little bit because when you add blues, it can affect the whole scene. So just pull it back a little bit more and uh, really try and make it look as natural as possible. And again, I like my edits to try and be as natural as possible. You can force things and make things look like they're not, but how I edit, I try and pull it back and really make it look as if you guys were there. I think I have quite a boring editing style actually, but it's just my style, uh, it's very basic. And uh, I am honored to edit these photos. So moving on again, a small vignette, a touch of sharpening and uh, lifting the whites just at the end there. So well done Pierce, it's an absolutely awesome shot, dude. I love that viewpoint. I'll definitely have to come across there one day. Good shot, well exposed, and it's an honor to edit your shot, dude. Keep shooting. Okay, moving on to the next shot. This is Tom Eden, and he's got some lovely, lovely images, as you can see here in his gallery. And uh, the image he actually sent over to me, I was hoping he was gonna send over because I actually watched his Instagram live at the Lake District when he shot this shot. And and he got so lucky with the weather at Bleaton. I was actually there the following week and I just had grey rain for the whole week. So dude, you've got a really, really lucky morning here at Bleaton. I've actually wanted a shot like this for ages, so I envy this shot. I absolutely love it and I'm glad you sent it over. It's an absolute beautiful shot uh, here at Bleaton and he's got some really, really nice colours in the sky and already I can see small little distractions of these rocks in the foreground 
he actually said he was rushing because the sky was so nice um, to get the composition right was a bit of a challenge. So you still executed the shot absolutely perfectly. It's exposed perfectly, but all I'm gonna do basically to start off with is just drop the highlights and really make those colors in the sky pop as much as I can. Uh, Tom shoots on the Sony, so there's great amounts of dynamic range there. Lifting up the shadows a little bit and actually bumping the whites and just being careful they're not clipping and just dropping the blacks a little bit. And already you can see the image is absolutely popping and you've got an awesome shot here, dude. Like I said, I'm so jealous of this image. It's absolutely gorgeous. So he's got some lovely color up in the sky there and I can see the blue sky starting to come through and I wanted to bring that through as much as I can. And doing that with the sky being red and the clouds being red and the sky being blue behind it, you really make those clouds pop a lot more. So after the basic adjustments in Lightroom, I opened it up into Photoshop just to start to get rid of some of the distractions and the rocks here in the foreground. I'm gonna keep a couple of them. Pressing J on your keyboard brings up this amazing brush that just makes stuff disappear. And uh, just went around the scene basically, went around the tarn and just got rid of tiny little bits that are distracting to me. You can be really, really picky with these bits and uh, the pickier you are, the smoother and cleaner the image will look. And uh, so I just went around the whole image basically, just getting rid of small little distractions that I didn't like. Small little bits of rocks and little bits that are kind of breaking the surface and just didn't look quite right to my eye and uh, primarily these big rocks down the bottom here were my focus, well mainly this one right down at the bottom here and uh, it kind of breaks the composition so I wanted to get rid of this rock right here so using the lasso tool and not being very accurate with it just drawing around the rock um, it's already underneath the water or most of it's already underneath the water I just need to get rid of the bit that's actually breaking the horizon so I just drew around it with the lasso tool, shift, delete and Photoshop wizardry has made it just disappear. Uh, just look around the edges where it's disappeared and make sure it's nice and smooth. And if you need to, just use the clone stamp tool and just make it nice and smooth. And all of a sudden disappeared and the image looks absolutely lovely now. It looks really, really clean. Uh, there's no distractions down here at the bottom that's just taking your eye away from the beautiful uh, scene that you've captured here in the beautiful sky. Once you're done there, press save, bring it back into Lightroom, add a small vignette to just draw your viewer straight into the middle. Again, lift the whites a smidge and job done. Dude, it's an absolutely awesome shot. I love the colors and I just love everything about it. You've got a beautiful morning, no wind, no nothing, perfect reflections. And uh, yeah, that morning was an absolute cracker. So well done, bud, absolutely awesome. Okay, so moving on, this is probably gonna be the last one. Sorry I didn't get through all the images. I will try and make this into a bit of a series and do it in the future, but thank you for everybody that has sent through their images. Uh, so last but not least is Pete Elliott, good mate of mine. He took this absolutely gorgeous shot of Corfe Castle in the, uh, in the mist. I'm yet to get this shot. As you can see, Pete's got a lovely Instagram account. He's got a really, really nice uh, feed on his Instagram. If you don't follow him, go and follow him. He's got some lovely shots over there. And he's been to some really, really lovely parts of the world. So straight into Lightroom, um, basic um, adjustments, highlights down, and just be careful with the shadows, lifting up the shadows slightly. And my main focus, because there's no clouds up in the sky in this shot, uh, he's got a very, very bright sky and a very, very dark foreground. And I know Pete doesn't shoot with grads, um, he likes to just use the, the, the camera basically and get the shot as near to perfect as he can. And uh, sometimes you need grads and sometimes you don't. And this is just one file where it could have been better if he had a grad on the sky and it would have just brought through that color a little bit more. But shooting on a Fuji X-T3, he's got great dynamic range and uh, he knows that. So he did expose for the sky. So later on in Lightroom, I can pull down a grad and retrieve all that color that's still in the sky. So pulling a grad down on the sky, you can already see how much more color is coming through already. And it just balances the scene so the sky is not super bright and the, the actual foreground is not really, really dark just makes it look a lot more balanced and uh, yeah just worked on that for a little bit and then a touch of sharpening and then I bought it on into Photoshop and in Photoshop again um, just using the brightness and contrast and the Wacom tablet just dodging and burning and uh, lifting bits here and darkening bits down there and really playing around with the mist and really trying to make it pop and make sure that the whites are coming through so we can really, really see and emphasize all of the detail in the mist there. And it's just a waiting game, really. All you've got to do is be very, very subtle with your adjustments. Uh, make sure you set a nice big feather on the brush and just really, as like a painter would, just be really, really delicate and just go around painting bits and dodging bits and pulling bits back that you don't like and just making things sit right and just look right to your eye. 
Uh, and after I fiddled around with that for a little while, uh, pressed save and I brought it back into Lightroom. Again, added a small vignette onto the image, lifted up the whites just a smidge. And uh, yeah, Pete, you've taken an absolute belt of a shot here, dude. It really is absolutely lovely. Uh, very, very jealous of that shot. I'm yet to get Corf Castle in the mist. Uh, but maybe we can do it one day together because that is an awesome, awesome image. So thank you to everybody who has uh, submitted their images. Um, I will make this into a series, so please do send over your raw files. Uh, they are safe with me, so don't worry, they all go into a file and I will use them for future videos. So send over one of your raw files, um, your Instagram handle, the camera you shot it on, to bencapooredit at gmail.com and I will hopefully try and get through some more images for future videos while we are all sat at home. So I hope you guys have liked this video, I've had great fun editing these raw files, it's really nice to be able to edit files from different cameras and see how different cameras perform. Uh, like I said, I definitely am not making any of those shots better. Your edits are absolutely awesome, but it's just a privilege to be able to edit some of your files and uh, stick it on a YouTube video here for you guys to see. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do consider clicking subscribe below. Give us a like, tell us what you think down in the comments, and please send me your raw files, and I will see you guys in the next one.